Okay, L ladies and gentlemen, so it, it's basically it's whatever, but it's everything in the group which is aircraft and engines. So uh, also from my side, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure. What I'd like to do is focus a little bit on the environmental air aspects of aircraft acquisition, focus on noise. And for that is maybe I start with stating the obvious. Why is actually an airline? Because an airline is just a normal business at a first stage. So why is an airline interested in noise? Yes, we'd like to be good neighbors. Yes, we'd like to be all of that is stated. But the other thing is if, I, if you look at some of the sources of noise, noise is produced by resistance. Resistance usually means fuel burn and fuel burn means money. So there you have the link actually why I not only have the neighborhood aspect but I have a sensible drive for a commercial reasoning to reduce noise. The Lufthansa Group fleet management is basically bundling all the activities for the Lufthansa Group, that is Lufthansa, that is Swiss, that is Lufthansa Cargo, that's Austrian, that's all the airlines under the umbrella of Lufthansa, for all the aspects related to the manufacturers listed on, on that chart. What we try to do is consolidate our requirements, put a planning towards the OEMs that they can have us as a reliable partner when we say something what we want that we would actually then commit if they deliver what we want. You have seen that chart before so I don't need to say anything on that and maybe I skip it. Maybe let me just look at the technology example and let's go a little bit back. We had a while ago the 727 which was then replaced by an A320. Both roughly the same size. They reduced 25% in operating cost. They reduced noise significantly. They reduced maintenance cost. All the aspects were reduced. If we're looking at today, the launch of the GTF or the LEAPX, therefore the NEO, the C-Series and all the other aircraft, they will again reduce noise significantly. They will reduce fuel burn, but the other elements will stay more or less the same. So we are challenged with investing in new technology and only getting half of the benefit as in the past. And that's the challenge for the airlines. We want to do it. We are doing it, as I will show in a minute. But that is really the challenge. What do we look at as Lufthansa and the fleet management team? So I'm, I have a team, a very capable team, engineers, economists and various uh, people looking at the aircraft life cycle. Because it's the same like with your car. Once you have your car and you have bought it, you can only reduce your fuel burn, for example, when you have a very gentle right foot. So the design area, when the car is being designed, same for the aircraft, that's when the basic parameters are being changed. That's when the next 50 years of what is happening are being determined. You can fine tune. Like one of my pre-speakers said, you can fine tune, you can try to reduce noise a little bit, but the step really comes from the new development. And that's why we, as one of the few airlines worldwide, work very closely with all the engine and airframe manufacturers to start working together at the beginning of the life cycle. When we evaluate aircraft and engines, I, I circled a couple of the elements which we are looking at and environmental sustainability, whether it's chapter 3, 4, 5, CAPE or any of the other elements which we are facing in worldwide operations, they are a significant part of what we evaluate when we look at aircraft. But, as I said earlier, and that concludes really the background of uh, what we're doing is we have the issue, everybody wants a homogeneous fleet, no complexity, but everybody wants the best aircraft for the best route. So we have to square that one. And when I look at the last one, which is innovative aircraft versus low capital expenditure, because everybody today wants to fly, and the willingness to spend a lot on flying is unfortunately from our side rather limited. So we need to push the manufacturers 
engine and airframe to develop the lowest noise and the lowest fuel burn solutions for the lowest cost because the cost which they have are later our price. So where do we live? Well, this is just, it's a poster which is two years old or two and a half years old and I, I thought I'd just put this in. It doesn't really matter if you don't recognize all the aircraft but you see already quietly what we have been doing in order to reduce inefficient aircraft. P aircraft which are not really useful in our fleet. We have a couple of replacement plans, like if I take the uh, top right corner of the chart, replacement plans, that's A319 and Avros and Swiss. They will be replaced by the C-Series with a GTF, significantly lowering fuel burn and noise. And the similar going through all the other aircraft. So we want to reduce the number of types by at the same time reducing our environmental footprint. An environmental footprint, again, is both, is noise and fuel burn, because I know we are focusing here on noise, but we should not completely ignore in our thinking the fuel element. So this is currently the thinking about 2025. Again, Austrian is still open. Brussels is not on this chart because Brussels is not yet fully consolidated, so we don't show them on the charts. What have we done in the past? Well, recently we committed to a couple of additional aircraft and a couple of aircraft which we want to replace. So now we have an order backlog of close to 300 aircraft, all modern aircraft, all significantly quieter. And uh, for that we have invested or we will invest in terms of list prices 36 billion euros, which is not too far from 50 billion US dollars. What do we do? Well, we reduce our cost, but more importantly, all the aircraft which we are replacing are at least 30% quieter. And we reduce about a quarter of the fuel consumption. And those are the things which we are committed to. But let me look at some other aircraft, because what is out there on the market? And some people said, can we re-engine, can we replace? We need to look at the aircraft which are on the market. The market is more or less set, but at the same time, we have made our bet on certain products, on certain game-changing technologies with Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier already. And let me give you one example of a small thing, but showing you what we do as an airline. Because an airline, in principle, is just the operator. But what we have done is we worked together with Boeing. We changed the flap design in order to have a different flap design in order to reduce noise. That has been implemented into the production line with Boeing. Then you have seen that from various airports is the same GTF chart. This time it's one of the New York airports. I think the issue was really when we selected the GTF and the C-Series, we knew this would be a game changer and we knew that this would trigger the incumbent manufacturers, Boeing and Airbus, to do something because they could not let a third party disturb the uh, comfortable duopoly. And this was the way how the NEO saw the day of light, how Max saw the day of light. So this is what we trigger, and this was part of the business plan which we presented to our board. So there is a certain element of industrial politics, you could say, in order to improve our environmental footprint. But this is with the manufacturers. So what do we do on our fleet? not retrofitting engines because that doesn't always work because you need pylons, wings or so to change. Take a 737. We looked at panels, we looked at the intakes and we have to think about it, what can we do on an existing aircraft? Here we reduced noise by 2 dB, which is a good step for something which has been in service for a long time. At the same time, we have pushed Airbus for 
I won't say for how many years. Let's just say many years. And we are extremely pleased that now deliveries will start in 2014 for this modified wing on the A320. And we have done similar things with Boeing. But th this is just some examples what we do. And we do a lot of measurements on specific flights in order to find out where are the sources of noise. And the thing is, we need to create a measurement environment because every aircraft has different weights, we have different weather conditions, and we want to achieve those noise reductions, not only on a no wind, sunny day at 15 degrees, but we want to achieve that sustainable. And if we have thousands of measurement points, they need to be calibrated into one. Technology, I mentioned a low emission fleet, noise and fuel, is an, of interest to us because it improves our economics as well. And our corporate responsibility as the largest employer in this area, but also as one who is touching a lot of us, including myself, who live close to airports, we have a responsibility regarding the environment and that includes noise. And hence, we look at every mean to reduce the noise wherever we can on existing fleets and to push manufacturers, airframe and engines, for future noise reductions. Let me therefore summarize how we select aircraft. I focused on the environment, but obviously we need certain aircraft for certain missions. So the size is important, cost is important, range is important. Uh, when can we get them? What triggered our decision on the GTF on the A320neo? Well, one of the reasons was it's a very good engine. But the other reason was with the choice of the GTF, we were able to push Airbus to advance the entry into service date by one year of the A320neo. If we would have let any other airline order the first aircraft engine combination, the NEO would have come one year later. So this, these are the things which we are doing in order to improve. So if we look at it, if I summarize some of those elements, we work on small things to improve the existing products. We work on the bigger things to drive the system, the system being everybody involved. But we need a reliable planning base. And the reliable planning base is really something which is important. Let me just give you one example. When we started working on the A380, as one example, it was before the year 2000. We started, then we signed the contract in 2001. We got the first aircraft in 2010. With our current order book, we will get the last aircraft unless we reorder, but that's a different story now, in 2015, and assume for a moment we would fly it for 25 years at maximum. That's 15 plus 25, that's 40. So I'm, I'm 40 to 50 years just for Lufthansa alone, so the manufacturer has much more to cover. We need a sustainable planning for like half a century. And the half of the century is actually giving me a couple of question marks why I'd like to show you some of these things. Do we just focus on low noise? Do we focus on efficiency, on aerodynamics, on structures, which is maintenance cost? Do we focus on emissions, which is fuel burn? What do we focus on? We can focus on all of them, but then it becomes a compromise. But do we get a ranking? Do we get a ranking of what is more important for us? And yes, if I live at the end of the runway, I know what's important for me. If I look if away from the runway, I also know what's important to me, and it will be something completely different. So we need a sustainable planning. And what do I mean with that? Let me ask you a question. Forget the blue line at the moment. Just look at the red line. There's 50 years between those two lines. One is a 707 say it's a 160-seat long-haul aircraft, long time ago, 
And now we have a 787-8, which is similar size. And look at what the footprint is. If I would have asked you 50 years ago, what noise shall we target? Knowing the red cone, would anyone have given us the blue line? Or would everybody have said, well, if you can halve it, if you can take 60% off or something, this is good enough. And that's what I mean with we need a sustainable planning because if we have a sustainable planning, we can push the manufacturers, the manufacturers then can accept that challenge. But that is a sustainable planning which we are needing. And therefore, it goes well beyond one legislation of five years or ten years. So with that, I'd like to more have a discussion. I, I saw that more as a, as a teasing presentation. And I'd, I would be happy to answer any questions or discussion points which you'd like to raise. Thank you very much. Okay, so the floor is open for discussion. Please raise your hand and then introduce yourself. Frau Barth again. Well, it goes in the same direction as my previous question. Um, at the end, um, you talked about a reliable planning basis um, in order to be able to uh, base your planning on that. Um, now, in terms of uh, planning, we had um, Mr. Werner and um, other um, stakeholders talking about targets um, for environmental protection um, and noise abatement. Is that a planning uh, basis that would form a point of orientation for you um, and that would be a reliable one if you took that as a political target of the European Commission, for instance, if that were defined as such? Um, or what type of um, clear and sustainable planning basis would you like to see? We, we have with ACARA and a couple of other measures, like looking ahead for the next years, decades, we have some planning. But this is like a global planning which is focused on alternative fuels, for example, how do we reduce CO2, which is focused on noise levels. But again, we need to see what is the balanced approach. One of the gentlemen said earlier, if we go for an open rotor, we will save a lot of extra fuel, but it will not be as quiet as a GTF. But it's quieter than today's engines. And at this point, there, there is no perpetuum mobile. We need, at certain points, we need trade-offs, and that discussion needs to be ongoing and solved. Yes, but if you look to your final, to your final slide, You've, uh, you, uh, and compare that with what ACARA is doing, then I would say that we can even see more revolution because, I mean, then ACARA is still a little bit, let's say, cautious with uh, some changes. The changes you showed us from the 60s to today is much more dramatic than from now to 2050 in ACARA. I, th I think w you're right, but this is like a snapshot. It will take some years to replace the whole fleets, and there's the small issue of financing those rollovers. And you have seen the number for our fleet, so you can imagine how some other airlines think about those numbers. And yes, we're willing to invest in those, and yes, we know we can meet those targets. But when we look at those targets, we need to have realistic targets also which are achievable in general without suffocating an industry. Okay, so you, here was another question. The microphone is coming. Bertolt Pult, Bundesvereinigung gegen Fluglärm. Ja, ich möchte Ihre. Uh, Federal Association um, Against um, Aircraft Noise. Now, I'd like to contradict um, or challenge your statement in that the newer aircraft is less noisier than the older generations. Um, for, for me, um, I have a, uh, had a look at the Fraport remuneration guidelines, and when looking at the charts, um, the PA 190 is noisier than the Afroliner um, that you replace uh, the uh, 
um, a pair with um, the A320 um, is noisier than the uh, B727, um, and the B737 is noisier in approach than the um, B747. Um, um, and you said um, um, you decided um, to go for the um, B7778 um, um, and the three ha uh, um, is um, much less um, noisier. Why did you decide in favor of the noisier one? It's a great question. Now, the noisy aircraft is something that you need to put in perspective, um, because I know that uh, some aircraft will be less noisier, but it also ha they also have a diff uh, capacity. So um, the 777ER is um, much uh, lower in terms of capacity, in terms of the 748, um, um, the 7478 is so significantly different in terms of capacity. Um, in some ranges, you cannot have um, a um, TUN engine aircraft, um, so you should take that into account as well. I'll give you an example, and must, uh, it's probably not the most relevant one, but we'll have to look at the entire fleet. Um, now, a 7478, um, for instance, and we have two aircraft um, that have pu full pay payload from Mexico to Frankfurt, and those are both um, four-engine types. There are no two-engine types in that class. Also, a 777ER, um, uh, you know, it's a good one, it's a quiet one, um, but it still can do it. Uh, so so we have to do our planning as well. And so um, having an aircraft that is quiet or fuel efficient is no good. If it uh, flies around um, just half full, then it's an inefficient aircraft. And if I then look at the environmental footprint per transported unit, be it a passenger or cargo, um, then this is uh, pollution, be it noise. Um, or uh, fuel emissions. Um, and therefore, you need to look at every segment and be very clear what are the uh, types of aircraft that we can use, what are the aircraft that we can, that fulfill the technical criteria, and we can then solve it within that range. Now, the issue you were alluding to is the 320 in comparison to what again? And the 737-300, now the 320 um, is an 180-passenger aircraft. Now, uh, the 737-33 um, is a 130-passenger um, aircraft. So that's a 25% difference in size. Yes, OK, uh, the smaller one is a little quieter, but the larger one um, um, I need because of the capacity um, and the range as well. A seven, um, Three, three, I cannot send to North Africa flying five hours. Good afternoon. My name is Lendina Smaya from Eurocontrol. <clears throat> from today's morning presentations, we heard that GBUS is being considered a technology to address noise abatement in Frankfurt area. What is your plans as an airline to equip with this technology? Uh, GBUS, we already have some aircraft equipped with that technology. It's not yet activated. It could be activated. And when we look at our new orders, all of them are spec'd accordingly. But it's, uh, it's probably a chicken and egg discussion. It's w we have it, but we'd, we'd like to see also the benefit when we use it. Because we have seen on various other initiatives, not here in Frankfurt, but on various, we are operating globally, that there's always local initiatives. And if we would spec our aircraft to all the local initiatives, it becomes unmanageable. OK, so there was another question over here, please. Herr Buchholz. Uh now, Mr. Buchholz, um, on the noise of aircraft, um, you also need to take the procedures into account, and in particular, um, the start procedures. Now, um, for the depart procedures, my question is, why um, does Lufthansa um, want to say goodbye to the modified ATA um, procedures and wants to increase the altitudes for overflies. Um, it doesn't make any sense. In the 70s, um, Lufthansa published in brochures that they want um, to reduce the uh, noise footprint um, in um, in favoring a steeper uh, departure angle. 
and they also pointed out uh, the noise um, reductions possible with that. Now you're doing the contrary of that, and I cannot understand why. Now, I'd love to respond to that question, but this is something I cannot respond to because I'm not an expert in that. Um, that is um, something um, that we have assigned to operations. Unfortunately, I cannot answer that question. I'd love to, but I can't. Comments? If this is not the case, then thank you very much, Mr. Buholz, and we come to the next presentation.